Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to deal with this topic of fleeing out of the midst of Babylon and how that is in a spiritual sense with us repenting and separating ourselves from this current world. Whereas we're living in a time now and in the past where people have used the scripture to say that we as Israelites should leave Babylon the Great. And that's how we're going to deliver ourselves. Now, when you get the scriptures prophetically, all right, Micah, the fourth chapter, really quick. Micah 4 and 10, all right, this is a precept because a uh, line must be up on line and precept must be up on precept. Through thy precepts, I get understanding, okay, because the, a lot of the people who make this argument they're still here in america waiting on someone to tell them to leave all right and um in times past you had elder Racha of gocc okay who took people i believe to egypt or somewhere out of the states and eventually uh left a lot of them over there okay and i believe he's now back in the united states okay which is uh that's off man okay because you have particular people who don't have the ability to travel out of the united states for whatever reason it can be okay particular uh issues you may have with the law okay case in point if you have child support issues which here in the united states america babylon the great is one of the many you know evil and wicked confusing things that israelite men undergo even those who try to take care of their children all right but let's just say we we have a, a situation where a brother has child support okay he can't leave out of the state okay in many other instances would you know pretty much hold you back from leaving out of the country so when you deal with fleeing babylon the Lord is not telling us to get on an airplane and deliver ourselves. This is Micah 4 and 10. It says, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. All right, and we're catching hell. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. Okay. There the Lord Yahweh shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. And that's speaking of this Babylon. Okay. The same Babylon Jeremiah is prophesying of in Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. Okay. Which was a letter. Okay. That he gave to Sariah, as you read it, to read to the captives that were at Babylon. But when you read the characteristics of this Babylon he's writing about, this was a vision of this Babylon where we are currently held captive, both Judah and Ephraim, as well as the different captivities where we may be scattered. So we're going to start here at verse five, Jeremiah 51 and five, it says for Israel have not been forsaken nor Judah of his God. All right. All 12 tribes, which are the tabernacle of David are going to be brought back together according to prophecy. Whereas you have everyone else try to, you know, use the Bible to speak everything else. But the the, the, the throne of David being reestablished in the earth, which is a government. All right. It says, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. And that's why we are in this situation, even going all the way back to Adam. OK, we didn't flee fornication. All right. We, we, we went and entered into it and supped with it. Going back to Eve, the decision she made in the garden, and we'll get that. Okay, and we find ourselves in a captivity that plays on our flesh to draw us into sin and rebellion against the Heavenly Father. So what are we to do in these times? To give ourselves the best chance, flee, all right, fornication. And we're going to get all of those things. Now, 
Jeremiah 51 and 6 says, flee out of the midst of Babylon, okay, and deliver every man his soul. So you're fleeing out of the midst of Babylon in a spiritual sense, and that's what we're going to get into. Be not cut off in her iniquity because this place is going to be destroyed. Now, two thirds of our people, okay, will be destroyed right along <laughs> with the wicked evildoers of Babylon because why? They didn't flee. They didn't cut off those wicked behaviors that separated us from our power. They didn't take heed to the prophets. Okay, for this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. And this is the same Babylon spoken of in Revelation, the 18th chapter. This has not happened yet. Okay, now let's go to a few scriptures so that we can get the understanding. Okay, because this word flee. Let's get it here. This word flee is nawas. Okay, it says to flee, to escape. Okay, just as there's scriptures that tell you to escape the strange woman. Okay, to flee from sin and fornication. We'll get that. Now it says to take flight, to depart, to disappear, to fly. Okay, now that's in a carnal sense. And when the standard is lifted up, you know, uh, when we're delivered out of Babylon the Great, we will actually, you know, come out of her in a sense of being delivered out of her. But while we're here in the flesh before the Lord comes, we are to behave ourselves in a manner. OK, to what? Abate. See here it says abate it. OK, let's click that. Abate it. Okay, the word abate means to decrease. Okay, so you see here abate it to flee away to abate it. Let's look up the word abate it real quick. Abate definition. Give me one second here. Okay, it says of something perceived as, as hostile, threatening, which sin has been threatening, negative and hostile to the chosen seed going all the way back. All right. To uh, Adam and Eve, which Eve sinned first, it says become less intense or widespread. It says to cause to become smaller or less intense. So what is the scriptures telling us to do? Let's get a quick precept here. All right, as it says, flee Babylon. Is it telling us to physically get up and deliver ourselves? Now, we know the scriptures say it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but who the Lord shows mercy. So by you leaving America, that does not guarantee you salvation. You can be a demon that uh, leaves America. Okay, this is the book of Sirach, the 17th chapter, and we'll start at around... Okay. 24 it says, but unto them that repent, he have granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience, which we all do. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Offend less. You see that? Abate. Okay. Flee. Okay. As the scriptures say, second Edward, the 16th chapter. Second Edges, the 16th chapter. In the 77th verse, it says, Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and are covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes. Okay, just uncultivated. You haven't <laughs> used the wisdom, the law, statutes, commandments, or anything to get yourselves together. You're just caught up and bound with sin. Sin upon sin upon sin. You don't stop. You don't have any fear of the Lord. To say I need to go another direction. Woe be unto those type of people. Okay. Who say the, we don't have to keep the laws. We don't have to do none of this. We don't have to do that. I can do what the hell I want to do. Okay. And the path thereof covered with thorns that no man. All right. May travel through. 
it is left undressed and cast into the fire to be consumed with uh their width okay now um the wild olive tree has been grafted back on which is a olive tree or an olive branch that has not been cultivated okay but now that we're grafted back on to the tree okay we now are partakers and can cultivate ourselves through the holy spirit by taking heed okay to the uh law statutes commandments the the precepts and so forth through the spirit in fear of yahweh bashim yahweh shai okay so woe to them that are bound with their sins so going back here when it says flee out of the midst of babylon and de deliver every man his soul this is a spiritual sense and that's what we're going to get into this is isaiah 52 and 11 it says depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch no unclean thing all right and this is all in the spiritual sense go ye out of the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord and we have bore the vessels of the lord as we have received this knowledge wisdom and understanding and this these earthen vessels let's get that real quick in second corinthians the fourth chapter Let's see here. Second Corinthians four and six for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. All right. And we were in darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the most high in the face of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, our mediator and high priest. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. All right. So the true vessels of Yahweh Bashim Shai is ultimately the spirit. Okay, now we have this treasure, these 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 uh these dark sayings, these these you know the parables, the precepts, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the fear of the Lord, in earthen vessels that the excellency and the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Okay, so yeah, we're in hell. Okay, but ultimately, we're not forsaken because we have the Holy Spirit. So going back here. Isaiah 52 and 11. Now it says, depart ye, depart ye. This word depart. Okay. So war. It says to turn aside. Meaning you walk away from something. To depart from something. To turn aside. To depart. To avoid. Okay. To be removed. Okay. To reject take away right that's what depart ye depart ye means okay as the scriptures say deliver thyself O Zion that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon that will be through our mindset changing that's how we're departing because that's where the war the war is really for your mind okay everything's a war for your mind it says depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. We have this this uh, uh, knowledge in earthen vessels. We have these earthen vessels, but the light has entered into our the darkness of our minds. So that we can then go undergo a uh, spiritual circumcision where we cut off. The things that are not needful for our salvation. It says, for ye shall go out, ye shall not go out with haste, nor go out by flight. For Yahweh will go before you, the God of Israel will be your rewarder. As birds flying, as it says in Isaiah the 31st chapter, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. So the scriptures say you're not going to go out by flight, nor by haste. So you're not going to hasten your way. Uh, uh, now we hasten the day in the spirit. OK, but we can't physically deliver ourselves by getting on an airplane. As a matter of fact, let's get the book of Hosea one. In seven. 
it says, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God. And I will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by, by battle, nor by horses, nor by ho horsemen. So you have people saying that we need to go take up the sword. That's not how we're going to get this victory. By going and getting guns. The victory will be given by the Most High God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai and the Holy Host, or the, which are the angels. So it's not going to be by the bow, by the sword, by battle, by us flying out of here, you know, getting on an airplane, which the Lord can crash that damn airplane. Okay. We're going to get out of here, as it says here in 2nd Edges. Let's get 2nd Edges, the ninth chapter. First of all, we have to be predestined. Okay, but those that are predestined will walk in a particular spirit. Okay, as we're here and as we've waken up in these latter days, calling on the name of the Lord, repenting. Okay. Second Edges 9 and 7. And everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. So there's going to be a particular spirit that you're in. Sighing and crying. That's going to ultimately uh, you, you're already marked for deliverance. To be exempt from the fire. Because the Lord has engrafted a particular mindset in you to be renewed and reawakened in the latter days. Ultimately, it's because he chose you from the foundation of the earth, but then he put a spirit on you to do particular things by your faith, which leads to works. Faith without works is dead shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them <laughs> right for me from the beginning. So ultimately you have to be sanctified from the beginning, which you getting on the airplane does not justify you from being delivered from the destruction. Again, you have to be sanctified from the beginning. Okay. You have to be sanctified from the beginning and you're going to be delivered. All right. By the faith you have, which is going to lead to works wherein you have believed. Right. So going back. To the book of uh, Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. OK, let's read it again. Depart ye. Verse 11, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Now it says, touch no unclean thing. Keep that in mind, for ye shall not go out with haste nor by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rewarder. Okay? Now, and the exalted servant is ultimately Yahawashai. Who's going to be the deliverer of the, the Israelites? When you read up, the Lord have made bare, his verse 10, his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. His holy arm is Yahawashai. The ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Most High. Okay? Now, uh, let's go to the book of Genesis, the third chapter, because we find ourselves in this same situation all over again. All right? Where we're being presented with temptation to depart from the Lord and choose a um, alternative route to immortality and salvation via artificial intelligence and all of these lies. Now, the serpent, which the spirit of the serpent is in the Edomites. Let's prove it. It says Genesis three and one. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the, any of the beasts of the field, which ultimately this is speaking of nations of people. This ain't talking about a damn snake. You got a lot of people who still, when they come against the Bible, they're coming with these weird, odd understandings that have been presented via Christianity. We don't teach that uh, actual snake rolled up on a woman. This word serpent, okay, it ultimately deals with one with cunning wisdom, which the devil Esau Edom today, all right, is, is a serpent. All right. On a whole nother level. 
with the with the enchantments and the evil and the uh, the, the the blessings he have on the left hand side to deceive you and to you know be able to use you know your flesh against you man now the word is nahash it just says a serpent image of a fleeing mythological but when you go to the root word it actually means what nahash to practice divination a witch okay to divine to observe signs to learn by experience to diligently observe He's diligently observed our people. He studied your melanin. He studied your your DNA to the best of his ability. He's figured out what gets you going, how to get you to rebel against the Lord. He's studied all of these ancient cultures and has created a whole system of magic. Okay, that calls to your flesh to rebel against the Lord and do as you will. Okay, fortune telling, divination. Now, real quick, let's get this. Uh scripture in revelation the 20th chapter because that old serpent is back okay revelation 12 and 9 which is speaking of end time prophecy you know and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world okay now when you go to uh second thessalonians the second chapter and various other scriptures all right satan is tied to a man who would ultimately rule in end time prophecy now a christian will say that speaking of just the antichrist no there's a nation of people who are the direct seed of satan on the earth and that's the biblical edomites now they push a anti-messiah uh, ideology but there's many anti-messiahs it's not just one so that man of sin are the edomites who possess that spirit, that cunning wisdom, that de de demonic wisdom in which they're able to enchant you into accepting your death as actual life. And that's what they've done. OK, now that old serpent, the dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil. Let's look up this word serpent. That old serpent, because the spirit of that serpent, that nation of people that was back there in the garden is back here through you Edomites. Ophis is the word. Let me just hit the point with the ancients, which are our forefathers, our ancestors. The serpent was an emblem of cunning wisdom. All right. Cunning and wisdom. The serpent who deceived Eve was regarded as Jews as the devil. Now, in the scriptures, the scriptures tell you the devil is going to cast some of you into prison. So the devil is not this mythological creature. Now, there is a spiritual demon, Satan, but he operates on the planet Earth through people. And that group of people are going to be in power. OK. When your Hawashai returns, Esau is the end of the world. That's the dragon being cast out. It's not talking about Satan being kicked out of heaven. We have lessons on that. If you need understanding on that, just ask on the comment boards because we do have lessons going into that. But that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. Revelation. Uh, yep. We just had another one. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Real quick. <clears throat> Revelation 20 and 2. And he laid hold on the dragon. That old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. All right. Now, this is going into history where Esau, Edom, okay, um, was pretty much put in captivity and not able to, you know, forward himself in the earth called the Dark Ages. But that's a whole nother lesson as well, which we just posted one. So going back to this, this, this uh, ordeal in a garden. Because here it is, Adam was given the breath of life, okay? And he was given a help meet named Eve. They were supposed to start a legacy of the sons of God. That was a family line that were to be the, the, the keepers of the way. All nations would, would look to them to uh, see light just as they're supposed to look to the Israelites, 
Because before we were called Israelites, we were called the sons of God with Adam being the direct son of God on earth. Now, when you read Genesis 3 and 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which Yahweh, the Lord God, have made. Okay? And he said unto the woman, all right, which the woman is Eve, which is symbolic of the church. Adam and Eve were to be one. All right. And not go after no other philosophies. They were supposed to forward a legacy of righteousness. OK. It says, yea, God have said ye shall not eat. All right. Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now they were given specific instruction. Now, what was that instruction? Second Edges, the third chapter. You're going to see why I'm bringing this precept out in a minute. Okay. Second Ezra. Speaking of Adam and uh, second Ezra three and seven, it says, and unto him, speaking of Adam, thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. Okay. Because Eve and him didn't flee fornication. And we'll show you that. And immediately thou, thou appointest death in him and his generations of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful thing and despised thy commandments. Then came the flood. So we were given instruction to love the Lord's way. This were the law, statutes, commandments before they were written on stone. Okay, they were given, all right, to Adam. And then he passed that instruction down to Eve. That was supposed to form, that was a family to form a legacy. Okay? So, they were given instruction and it was it was uh, oral at the time. It was just a way that we were to walk in and not turn aside from. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said that ye shall not eat of it Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Neither shall ye touch it. Now, let's look at this word touch. All right. Na guy. Okay. Touch, reach, strike. Okay. To extend to, to be stricken. Okay. To be defeated. Okay, to be stricken by disease, which sin is a disease. To approach, to reach for, to cause, to touch, apply, to attain. Now look at this one, to befall. <laughs> to befall of fate and we fell from our estate. That's where you get Genesis 6 dealing with the sons of God. Okay, so we, be, we fell from our way. We were stricken. By the philosophies of the other nations, which are a, a snare unto us and living after the way of Esau. And this time is going to lead you to death. So right here. It says. God said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, what did the serpent say unto the woman? Ye shall not surely die. And this is the philosophy that they have enticed you with in these times. You, you're not going to die if. You just eat this or if you just practice this lifestyle, if you, you, you know, sex does not have to just be between a man and a woman. Sex can be between a man and a child. Sex can be between a, a, a woman and a woman. Sex can be anything you want. As a matter of fact, why does it have to be called sex? What is sex? What is gender? Let's do away with all of these various different things. And you see Jake is at the forefront of it. They've touched it. They've 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 uh, put it on. They've covered themselves with the covering, but not of the Lord. You see? Which actually makes you naked. Now, as you read down, let me just jump to the point. No, let me read. It says, um, and God, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, one point I wanted to make here. 
it says, neither shall you eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. And the 11th verse, depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Touch no unclean thing. Which brings us to another precept. Okay. Not joining yourself with this world. Fleeing fornication. Okay. Let me start at uh, 14. Because we are the temple of the Lord. Okay. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellow hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness, when you link in your ways with them? And what concord hath Hamashiach with ba Baal? Okay. And right now, our people are being tempted to bow the knee to Baal. All right via particular things that are happening in the earth right now basically they're saying if you don't bow to the image of Baal you're not going to be able to live which is going to do what tempt your soul right or what part hath he that believeth with the infidel unbeliever or what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God hath said I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And this is speaking about the Israelites. He didn't say that about no other nation. This is a prophecy, all right, uh, 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 of what he's going to do when he puts the law, statutes, and commandments in us. But even under that first covenant, it says, if ye follow my way, <laughs> I will dwell with you. Now he's going to dwell in us. We are the temple. And it starts with us receiving this word, the Holy Spirit. Now, Rechakwadash. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, which is what has bit us in the ass from the beginning of us receiving this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay? So the serpent comes with this whole ideology to throw you off the path. Now let's get a quick precept. Proverbs 23 and 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. Because when you read this story. One thing you can. Um, pick up. Uh, Genesis 3 and 4. And the serpent said to the woman. You should not surely die. Taste it. Here eat it. Okay. Okay. Pull your sleeve up. Then what does it say? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Okay. Now eat thereof. What does it say here? <laughs> Be ye separate. Second Corinthians 6 and 17 said the Lord touch not the unclean thing. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what, what do we know this story dealing with Adam and Eve to be associated with something that they ate. Now, eating something is synonymous with taking in wisdom in the Holy Scriptures. Eat this roll. Okay. Well, Eve, <laughs> as the women of our time do all the, you know, are doing even to this day. And what the nation of Israel is doing to this day as the supposed wife and woman of the Most High. They're committing whoredom. They're following after a whole nother way. Now, he said, when you do eat this. Then shall your eyes be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, Adam and Eve were only to know good. But through this fall, now we know good and evil. <laughs> right. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, see that it was good for food. Like, OK, I can eat this, too. And pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise and see this science and this the way of this world it ultimately it boasts itself against the knowledge of the lord to make you wise to transcend you from 
the 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 the, the you know tr- traditions of the Bible and to get beyond that. Okay, the metaverse, all this crap. Okay, the the karagma, which is gonna have you as a uh, you know everything's gonna be right there for you. It's gonna be ple- it's gonna be a uh, 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 tempting to your flesh. Okay, all I have to do is just take this uh, 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 taco sauce from Biden, and then I'll be able to have a job. I'll be able to work forever. I won't have to worry about this. I won't have to be worry about that. But the ways of evil eventually lead to death it may start out okay look at people in the music in uh, jake in the music industry but they're in captivity they got all of this money they're they're flossing all of these things but they're empty on the inside it says she took the fruit thereof and did eat okay now i want to look up this word eat there's a point where Ezra said, let my soul devour wisdom. So she ate of this philosophy. A call. She covered, they covered themselves with a covering that's not of the Lord. To eat, to devour. Okay, to devour. To cause to eat, to consume. And they consumed another philosophy. Okay, and the proof of that is in this precept. Proverbs 23 and 6, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Esau's the devil. He hates you. He wants the birthright back. So you think he's going to present to you something that's really good for your soul no he's gonna present to you something that's gonna take you off your path okay for as he thinketh in his heart so is he eat and drink saith he to thee but his heart is not with thee his mind ain't with thee but he's constantly telling you to eat why why do you think that is yohana so you so you can become better and be the best workers in the, in the, in the, in the enter into the NWO? No. To throw you off the path, to put a to, put, to say I own you, to get you into a system where you're gonna constantly wane and wane away from the Lord, to where you don't even belong to the Lord anymore. You belong to Him. Eat and drink, saith He to thee, but His heart is not with thee. The morsel, all right, which the morsel is ultimately food. Which thou has eaten, and that's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right, the morsel which thou has eaten, the law, statutes, commandments, the spirit, thou shalt vomit up and lose thy sweet words. See, the morsel is synonymous with words. Okay, let's look up the word morsel because knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is likened unto food. All right, the word is path or patha all right fragment bit morsel of bread now the scriptures say man shall not live on bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of my mouth which is the holy spirit where the lord said i will sup with you okay so when you take on to this man philosophy you eventually lose and forget the sweet words of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to keep you on the path. Now, let's get a quick precept. Sirach 21 and 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Does that mean you get on an airplane? No. Flee from sin as from the face of the serpent. This is ultimately them giving you wisdom. Our, our, our ancestors giving us wisdom not to go in the way of Adam and Eve. Which we know Eve sinned first. But it ultimately led to a falling away. And we're going to be enticed in this time with even greater things and more threats that if you don't bow to his way. So flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, for if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee in the ass. 
you know, the scriptures say don't add to the word, but that's what it's going to do. It will bite thee, the teeth thereof, or as a teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Now, what does a serpent do? It bites you. Okay, and once that venom gets in you, you start to lose conscience. You start to lose understanding of who you are and all of these various different things. You die. Well, in a spiritual sense, the serpent is he wants to bite you now. Okay. He has particular uh, 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 methods to do that. So flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Okay. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Hmm. So going back, let's get this here. Proverbs 5 and 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. So it sounds good starting off like, okay, this this is going to better me. Okay, I, you know, I, you know I'm going to get myself into this situation, you know, yada, yada, yada to hell with what the prophets are saying. I'm going to go after this strange woman. Okay, not after wisdom. I'm going to go after the strange woman. Because her voice is smooth. You guys look crazy. I'm going to go over here because this there everybody's doing it. Okay. The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. As a matter of fact, let's start at one. Proverbs 5 and 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to mine understanding. Bow thine ear to mine understanding. That thou mayest regard discretion... And that the lips may keep knowledge, thy lips, see, that you may have discretion, that you may understand, okay, this is this, that's that. Okay, I know not to go down that path because you're, you're ultimately moving forward with the fear of the Lord. See, that's what happened. Eve and Adam moved ultimately forward without the fear of the Lord, the sons of God. Okay. Because what does it say? Eve was the mother of all the living. Those who were supposed to have life took on to the ways of death. Now the word discretion is <laughs> ma za ma purpose. All right, device. Devices now does not the evil have many mischievous devices, witty inventions. Woo! I know there's a pro precept that goes into wisdom finds out the witty inventions. Proverbs eight and twelve. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. And Esau has all of these witty inventions right around you. Artificial intelligence, technology using his medical field, all of these things to draw you in to taking an oath unto Baal, which is Satan at the end of the day. So you, you, you attend to wisdom that thou mayest regard discretion, that you have awareness, a spiritual IQ to know, okay, I'm not going to go that way. I'm not going to do this. That's how you flee Babylon. All right. That thy, thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. See, her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. So those of you who consent unto her are going to be had in derision. Right? Lest thou should ponder the path of life, her ways are movable. Thou canst not know them. And you think you're going to go into these situations and win. But eventually the devil is going to have you in a whole <laughs> system of throughness. That's all we can say. You go ahead and make a covenant with this devil right now thinking you're going to be all right. You're going to find yourself. Well, I got to do this. I got to do that. E evil never stops. That's why they got to lie so goddamn much because it's, it's all based upon slider hand. You got to content. Now their enchantments aren't working anymore. Everybody's waking up to their BS except Jake for the most part. 
course, you know, the, the, those of us who are, who've woken up. But Jake is crumbling, man. They have no wisdom. They're leading a life without God. They're just out here losing, man. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's get Sir Sirach 20. Sirach 20 and 31. Better is he that hideth his folly than a man that hideth his wisdom. Necessary patience in sinking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. And that's two thirds of our people. They're leading their life without a guide. Okay. And you have groups like one body teaching you to live your life without a guide or fear of the Lord. Just live your life. Basically telling you to bow to the to the image and you so you can live. So the 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 her you know the mouth of this strange woman, which is you know uh, the ways and philosophies of this world, they're smoother than oil. They come at you as if you know like okay, they sound pleasing to the flesh, just like Eve. What did she say? She saw that the uh, 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 the fruit thereof that the serpent brought which wasn't no damn apple now when you look at microsoft and apple computer you notice it has the apple with the bite taken out of it that is that forbidden wisdom left hand knowledge through technology in this world they know they're the devil but the, but it wasn't an actual apple that she ate that took her off of her her deem and it wasn't a snake that squirreled up to her no it was a, it was a human being the scriptures say that man is also a beast. What's that in the book of Ecclesiastes real quick? Oh boy, Ecclesiastes 3 and 21. Who know it? No, that ain't it. Matter of fact, hold up. Because now I, you know, sometimes you, now I want to know. I know it's in the third chapter. Let's see here. All right, Ecclesiastes. Three and eighteen, I said in my heart concerning the estates of the son of men that God might manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are beast. Okay, and especially when you uh you're beast when you're when you're living a life without the law, statutes, commandments. So Adam and Eve were given the ways of life, just as we, the nation of Israel, Okay, we're giving the ways of life, but get what do we do? We went and followed after the ways of these other idols and other gods, man. Okay, but the Lord said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. But what did we do? We touched it. We ate it. And what did it lead to? It has led to the greatest fall <laughs> known to mankind. Okay, we're, we're messed up. And now in these latter days, are we just now understanding to turn away from it? Proverbs 5 and 7. Hear me now, O therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. And that's ultimately what Adam and Eve did. And that's what you're being tempted with in these times. So the tree was the, the, it, it was it was presented as something to make you wise, a better and alternative way to immortality to you know then then righteousness because righteousness takes a process you have to apply good and, and and eventually the seeds of you know the the fruit of what you know of righteousness will will show itself but see with wickedness on the left hand side you have a microwave alternative to getting uh things done and what happens eventually it decays eventually you die 
eventually you 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 dumb yourself down, man. Okay, verse seven. And when the eyes of both of them were opened, they tasted that good sin because it, it tastes, sin. you know, to to go off to sin to the flesh is like yes, but then you have that fight in the back of your mind, which is a spirit, man, to put off the deeds of evil, to flee sin. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, meaning they covered themselves with a covering that wasn't of the Lord. Okay? Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover what they covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin unto sin, that walk to go down into Egypt... And have not asked at my mouth, which is the prophets. Deuteronomy 17 said we, we shouldn't return to Egypt in a, in a, in a uh, uh, mental sense. The leader of your people is supposed to teach you to get your mind out of Egypt. But here you all are strengthening yourselves in the strength of Pharaoh and trust in the shadow of Egypt. Now, the scriptures tell you that. Your trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your confusion. Verse 3, therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame. Call hello, Yahweh, Shemiah, 1144. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. You didn't flee from it. You touched it. You tasted it. You put it on. You covered yourself with it. All right? Which the remnant have learned their lesson. And we're fighting. Now, speaking of Egypt, real quick, and we'll end it off. Proverbs 7 and 5, all right? 7 and 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. All right? Which a sister or a kinswoman who's in the right spirit can be a defense if she has your best interest. Okay? And wisdom is a defense. It's our alma mater, the all nourishing mother that's why women are what known as the first teacher she is supposed to pass down the legacy of the father to the children but that's a whole nother lesson it says so say unto wisdom thou art my sister and call understanding thy kinswoman you're protective of, of her and, and she's protective of you okay you have a, a, a sister who's in a right spirit and she you love her and she's telling you, nah, watch out for this bitch. Nah, -uh, she ain't good for you. Hey, you'll protect her. A kinswoman, some, a woman who's related to you, who's, you know, ultimately has your best interest, upstanding, you know? You're supposed to look at wisdom like that. Because wisdom has your best interest. And wisdom is, is, is likened unto a woman in many scriptures, but it's also likened unto a brother. It's also likened unto water it's like into many things but anyway it says that they may keep thee from the strange woman see you're you're a good uh, a, a sister in her right state of mind or a auntie or a mother in her right state of mind will see a whore you bring her in you bring her to dinner hey this is angela and they'll be like oh hell no nah. this is a freak so they'll keep you from the strange woman from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Like, nah, she ain't got your best interest, man. So anyway, we just jump to the point. And behold, verse 7, and, and beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youth a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. He didn't have any understanding. He went the way to her house. He didn't flee it. Right. He went towards it to touch it <laughs> in the twilight of the evening in the black and dark night. And we we are in the scriptures say to cast off the works of darkness. OK, the, the sin that thus easily beset us. Right. And behold, there met with him a woman with the attire of an harlot and of a subtle heart. Now, America is known as the mother of all harlots. Let's get that. Revelation, the 17th chapter, 
In the fifth verse, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Right? <laughs> so, at night, this, this dude without understanding, this is just a similitude, is walking towards her house. So there met him a woman with the entire of an harlot and of a subtile heart. Ooh, come with me. You cute. Damn, you handsome. Come with me. She is loud and stubborn and her feet abide not in her house. That's the type of woman you want to stay away from. A loud, stubborn woman with no father to keep her that didn't keep, you know, it's just a complete castaway. Now she is without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. And that's how sin is for us. Everywhere you look, sin is there waiting on you. A way to rebel against the Lord is there saying, do it, come on. So she called him and kissed him, and with an imputed face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee. Basically, I am going to upgrade your life. And this is a philosophy that's likened to a strange woman. Diligently to seek thy face, I have found thee. I have decked my bed with the coverings of tapestry, with the carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. See that? Egypt. See, we're in Egypt again. The, the spiritual Sodom in Egypt, all right, which has many... You know, uh, ways to attack your soul, man. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Like, when you smell that, how could you think that it's bad for you? <laughs> Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with, with loves. Make a covenant with me. For the good man is not at home. He is gone along the journey. Take this 501c3. Take this juice. You're you worried about a god. I'm God. I can give you a better deal here. You waiting on God. That's stupid. Here, take this. He hath a bag of money with him and will come at a day appointed. That's Yahweh Shai. The, the, the strange woman tells you to disregard Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and your alliance with them. Now, as you read down, it tells you that her house is the way to hell going to death so that's what happens when you don't flee fornication when you don't flee babylon so i just wanted to get into that hopefully i'll edify it on to the next shalom